Thank you for joining us today here at the meeting on the Mesa. My name is Sue Washer. I'm the president and CEO of AGTC, a gene therapy company working in the ophthalmology, otology, and CNS space. Our forward-looking statements as described, we are an industry-leading gene therapy company where we believe we're poised for success. Our lead program is an X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, a rare ophthalmology indication, and we're advancing this program into phase two, three trials in the beginning of 2021 based on our exciting, robust, and strong data from our phase one, two trial that I'll talk about more later. We also have seen early evidence of biological activity in two different achromatopsia trials, which are both also orphan ophthalmology indication. We believe that this success in the clinic is based on a best-in-class technology platform. We have a full-scale, commercial-ready manufacturing process that is highly productive and makes very pure and potent material. We have specific expertise in designing these vectors, and we're one of the few companies in the space that uses disease-specific large animal models as well as non-human primates to guide our clinical development. And we believe all of these capabilities together have allowed us to produce a very robust pipeline. Based on our recent accomplishments, we are poised for success in a changing landscape. As I said, we were able to develop a very robust set of positive data in our ongoing phase one, two trial in X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, despite the effects of the ongoing pandemic. And this is based on our creative use of ability and ability to get patients in for testing such that we've collected all that data, remain on track to start that new advanced trial, as well as to report additional data in both XLRP and achromatopsia. Our pipeline is expansive. Our lead program, as I mentioned, is an X-linked retinitis pigmentosa, where we plan to move that trial uh, into phase one, two, three in the, in the early 2021 time period. We have the good data from the two achromatopsia programs. We're also in the clinic with a partnership with Bionic Site on a unique optogenetics program. So that's our fourth clinical, indica clinical stage indication. And then we have a large number of preclinical programs covering otology, CNS, and then some additional ophthalmology programs, making this a very robust but concentrated platform. We have been able to accomplish significant milestones. We have a strong balance sheet in that we ended June 30, our fiscal year, with $80 million of cash on, on the balance sheet, which gives us cash runway into the fourth quarter of 2021. Uh, and in the first half of 2020, we accomplished every single one of our goals, which I think shows very good execution despite the pandemic. These are the same goals we had going into 2020, and we were able to accomplish everything in the first half, which sets us up really well to be able to accomplish significant milestones in the second half of this year, as well as the first half of 2021. And that includes additional data in all of our programs and moving that XLRP program into phase two, three. We believe that this excellence in the space is based on several things, one of which is our commitment to patients. We have one of the broadest, deepest relationships with a large number of patient advocacy groups of anybody in the space, and this really helps us in setting the up clinical trials appropriately, recruiting patients, making sure patients are aware of our trials. Also, as I said, we have a comprehensive technology platform. We have deep expertise in how to build and design these vectors. And that's illustrated in this slide where we show that we test our capsids and our vector selection um, in non-human primates because non-human primates have different eye structure than lower mammals. And not just the capsid must be tested in large animals, but also on the right-hand side, we show selecting promoters for specific expression in specific cells. And again, this must be accomplished in non-human primates. Our manufacturing platform is excellent. Uh, we have re 
achieve significant productivity increase, about 10x what our, our early clinical and preclinical was, 10x what standard transfection is able to accomplish. And that means in a 50 liter reactor, we get as many as two thousand ophthalmic doses from that single reactor run and the product is very full with no, over 90 percent full capsids. Our first program is an X-linked retinitis pigmentosa. It's a very large or ophthalmic indication that has about 20,000 patients in the US and EU. It's, a, it's really a devastating disease in that these patients lose vision every day, day after day, year after year. We do have a leading program in this indication. As I mentioned in our phase one, two study, we saw sustained treatment effect and a favorable safety profile. We have excellence in design of our gene therapy products. Here you see a cartoon of what the product is for XLRP. It is an engineered capsid that as the data I showed earlier, allows for efficient and very high levels of transduction into photoreceptors, which is the cell we need to get into in this indication. We also engineered the gene itself to be able to be stable um, uh, throughout production and still code for the full-length wild-type protein. We do have a very strong competitive position in this uh, market. We have safe dosing over a six-fold, uh, six different groups, which is a hundred-fold range in concentration. We believe that safety is job one, and over the 28 patients we have dosed, we have seen no product-related SAEs and no recurrent inflammation, which has been reported by our peers in this space. We also believe that the specific engineering we have done means that we have a very well-designed vector construct as shown by the extensive preclinical data we have, um, as well as the clinical data. And we have seen meaningful improvements in visual function that has been sustained over time, as well as encouraging signs of improvements in visual acuity. Here is some of that data. So this shows the visual sensitivity and the fact that we had about a 50% responder rate with improvements in visual acuity in the centrally dosed patients in our phase one, two. And recently, and as others have been reporting, there's another way to look at visual sensitivity, not just as the change in the mean sensitivity over the treated area, which we believe is really important to patients, but also as the change in specific points that are tested in the visual acuity. And when we reanalyze our visual sensitivity data in this way, we again have a very good response rate in that seven of the 15 total centrally dosed patients in three different dose groups in our phase one, two, did meet this criteria. And this higher dose group, group five, is the dose we plan to move forward into late stage development. And we had four of seven of those patients meet the response criteria. So again, whether you're looking at mean sensitivity or point-wise sensitivity, we have a very good response rate and are able to move forward with the group five dose. This is the sign, encouraging signs of biological activity that I discussed in that seven of nine of those centrally dosed patients show in the treated eye that we're seeing trends and improvements in visual acuity that are unlike anything seen in any of the untreated eyes. And we think that this is an encouraging supplemental endpoint. This is the proposed design of our phase two, three trial that will begin in the first quarter of 2021. As I stated, we're bringing that group five dose group forward because it showed a robust response in visual sensitivity. And we're also bringing group two forward because we also saw biological activity in that group two dose. So we have a tenfold range that we're testing in this phase two, three trial design compared to an untreated control. We plan to do a formal six-month interim IA on a subset of these patients so we can get an early indication of this new endpoint of the point-wise analysis and be able to review that six-month data with the FDA and assure ourselves that we're on the right track with our statistical design and our patient numbers such that that 12-month endpoint will be suitable for presentation to the FDA. 
So moving forward to summarize, we're on track to finalize that phase two, three protocol for initiation in the first quarter of 2021. We have the clinical ma trial materials in process as we speak and will be available to begin that trial. And our next data report will be in the fourth quarter of 2020, uh, where we'll look at the 12 month analysis for groups one through four of our phase one, two, and we'll have a full six month analysis from our phase one, two and the two higher dose groups, group five and group six, with the caveat that we have already provided for you the uh, visual sensitivity uh, analysis of the group five. Our other program is an achromatopsia, another orphan ophthalmology indication that's in the clinic. And this indication, we have recently been able to complete the adult enrollment. Uh, pediatric enrollment is ongoing, and we presented in June, January of this year early signs of biological activity, and we'll be, again, providing encouraging uh, following up that encouraging data in January with additional data in the fourth quarter of this year. As I mentioned, we have the innovative optogenetics program that we're working on with Bionic Sight. And this program, we did again apply a very uh, detailed expertise and design to developing the construct. The IND is cleared, the first patient was dosed, and the site is now actively enrolling and uh, uh, dosing patients post COVID. We do have a very exciting preclinical pipeline. Uh, we've been making good progress in, in moving programs forward into IND enabling studies. Uh, and many of these programs use cutting edge technology, such as engineering a large gene to either fit and still have an active protein, like in dry AMD, or engineering the large uh, DNA into two different vectors, the dual vector technology, like in StarGuards. And these are just two examples of how we really apply our design expertise to make the best product possible. Again, just to summarize the pipeline, we have four programs in the clinic, the lead one being X-linked retinitis pigmentosa that's moving into late stage development and other exciting data releases to be happening in the fourth quarter of this year and ongoing into 2021. We do have a very experienced team that we've put together who has experience across ophthalmology, orphan drug development, as well as in our preclinical programs and CNS, Mark Sherman, our CSO, is a very experienced and accomplished uh, neuroscientist. With that, I will close and thank you for joining us here at the meeting on the MESA.